I truly hope that you enjoy learning about today's wines. But it goes without saying that pairing wine and food totally adds to our tasting adventure. So I'd like to introduce Carrie Ann Shea and our special guest to do just that. Hi Ron, and thanks. I'm Carrie Shea, and I'm happy to introduce Nick Dodona of Les Zigamots, who will pair today's wines with some amazing foods. Nick, what's your take on pairing wine and food? Well, I really think that the most important thing with just pairing food and wine, or even enjoying wine in general, is just to make sure that you really have a lot of fun with it. Um, there is no right way to pair food and wine, and everybody's palate is a little different. Now, the very first wine uh, that the panel was tasting earlier, actually, uh, I paired with uh, some oysters from Wellfleet. And uh, these oysters from Wellfleet come from our raw bar here at Les Zygamont, and it's an example of a very, very, very similar pairing. Uh, and so, with the Muscadet, you have almost a chalkiness was mentioned before, a very, very much a lemonness. Um, and even some would say that actually Muscadet can taste a little bit like crushed oyster shells, that certain really great minerality that comes out of it. Is this your first time having oysters? Well, let's just say. <laughs> I can use any sauce that you like with it. Ready? Tasty. Yeah, one of the things mentioned earlier was actually, uh, they threw out a term earlier called surly, and that actually means is the yeast goes dormant when the wine is being made, it adds complexity to the wine by leaving it on, leaving it on the lees, they call it. And that really adds a very, very nice, I feel, a really nice complexity that really complements oysters, especially in this situation. Yeah, a very, very fresh taste. <laughs> so, what do we have here? Oh, well, this was wine number two that they actually were t the panel was tasting a little bit earlier. Um, this is Syrah. So it's the same thing as Australian Shiraz. The great thing about this wine is really the bouquet on it. I mean, it really has an absolutely amazing um, nose on it. Very, very floral, almost like very, very brambly. If you've ever been like blackberry picking or anything like that, it's just really, really nice bouquet. So do you want to try the wine? I do. <laughs> wow, that's a little strong. Mm. Interesting. Yep, so switched over to red wine now, but it does have that really definite fruit character to it, which is really nice. So we have one of our pâtés that we do here, which is actually extremely, extremely popular. It's called Mousse Truffé. Mm -hmm. And so now, with the really fruitiness of the wine, we're kind of doing, whereas before with the Muscadet, we were doing a similar pairing. Now we're going to the opposite pairing. So we're taking somebody, something that's really, really um, has a definitive fruit characteristic on the palate, and we're pairing it with something that's a little bit more savory. So now, Mousse Truffé is a chicken liver mousse pâté that's also made with fresh shaved black truffle. Ooh. All right? Yes. So do you like mustard? I do. All right, that's for you. Thank you. Okay, let's try it. The creaminess of the pate is mm. fantastic. That is good. That made a big difference. Yeah, that calmed all mm. the fruit and the wine right down and made it smooth and kind of yeah, glide Yeah, it wasn't bitter at all. Palate. I actually think that the this in this case, the pate actually made the wine taste better. Definitely better. <laughs> I like it better the second time with the food. Especially, yeah, with that good. first taste and everything, yeah. that wild fruit characteristic, and then it tempered it right down, which is exactly, uh, exactly can kind of be the magic behind pairing food and wine. So this is our Italian wine. Yes, um, this is actually a uh, an Amarone, which is kind of different from any of the other wines that we've tried earlier because it's made a little bit differently. Um, so Amarone, um, it's actually from a region in the Veneto, which is the north e northeast region of Italy. It's from a region called Valpolicella. So the full name of this wine is Amarone della Valpolicella. And what they do that's different is normally you pick a grape, you crush it, and then you make the wine. You add your yeast, you know, it ferments, mm -hmm. you make the wine. However, with this wine, this particular um, wine from Italy, actually you raisinate the grapes first. So they harvest the grapes, they dry them on mats for a period of time until some of their water weight's left. Uh, some of their water actually leaves the grapes. And so what you get is concentrated sugars and concentrated flavors, and then you make the wine after that. Wow. Um, and so what you get is this very, very deep, rich, long-lived, I mean, really, really amazing style Does wine. Does it take a long time to make? Yes, it actually, because there's so much sugar, yeah. it actually takes longer for the yeast to turn all that sugar to alcohol. So as opposed to normal wines, typically right. the fermentation period would be longer. Oh, interesting. Wow. 
That's a big one. That's strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big, big, strong one. But Ooh. luckily enough, we um, actually pulled a cheese out of the kitchen, um, and myself and the chef actually paired uh, this Amarone oh. with one of my favorite pairings. So what we have here is a blue cheese uh, that's from New York. Um, it's called Use Blue. The difference between this cheese and most blue cheeses is it's not cow's milk, it's actually from sheep. And so that gives it a little bit of a deeper, a little bit of a richer, you know, mm -hmm. almost funkier flavor. Funky flavor, huh? Funky flavor. <laughs> now you can either put it on some bread, there's some fig bread here that we okay. make here, or you can just eat it by itself. And then we also put the, you know, traditional accompaniments. There's a couple of Honeycrisp apples, some strawberries, and some uh, walnuts <laughs> on the plate as well. So the walnuts you would eat with the blue cheese? Or just separately? Well, yeah. Well, the reason why you have on cheese plates you see so many different things mm. is because, like food and wine pairing, cheese and fruit or cheese and nut pairings can change the flavors of either as well. So if you eat them uh, together, it may taste just a little bit I hear strawberries take, brings out a lot of flavor. It does, especially with certain kinds of cheeses, especially the softer cheeses. Yeah. It really, really does. Uh -huh. All right, ready? Uh-huh. That's stinky cheese. That is strong <laughs> cheese. I'm funky. Mm. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> that cheese is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think this is an example of something that immediately the cheese was really, really potent and very, very, you know, strong, almost, you know, stanky cheese, yeah. right? You know, right when you put it on your palate. However, as soon as you take a sip of the wine, it tempers down that and mm -hmm. makes it um, not more palatable, but makes it a little bit more even, a little bit more balanced, which right. I think is really, really cool. Excellent. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us on Wine Inside Out TV. Thank you, Carrie, to our fantastic guests, our killer crew, and Le Zygamot. And remember, be comfortable with who you are and make choices based on your own individual taste and not someone else's opinion. So embrace your wine life, and as always, drink what you like.